right, so luckily I edit these videos, so it's going to look like it took me one try to get this, not four. Yeah, this is four. <laughs> Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. I told y'all we was going to be doing some more fishing stuff with Dusty here. If everybody remembers Dusty, if you haven't seen the previous two videos I've posted, we went fishing. It's winter time, not the best of luck, but we did get out and enjoyed it. The last time we went out, it was a beautiful day. There was a million people on the freaking lake. But had fun. We didn't get skunked that day. I ended up catching that one little fish, one but little fish. that means we didn't get skunked. So. Told y'all we was gonna be doing some more uh, bait and tackle and this guy's the one who's gonna be teaching me a lot of this stuff. Uh, fished a lot in my life, but never nothing crazy, nothing hardcore. Uh, he fishes tournaments and stuff, so he knows a lot more about this. So if you're like me and you wanna learn, he's gonna be the one to teach us. So what are we gonna be doing today, Dustin? We're gonna be making a brush jig. Uh, so all different kinds of jigs. You got football heads, you got ball heads. Anyway, so we're gonna be, uh, we're gonna be able to brush jig today, start from lead and take it I take you through every step all the way through to the finished product and we're gonna to try to give you as much information as possible and then I think we're gonna to try to put the links at the bottom of, uh, of this video to where you can go and you can see uh, exactly everything that we got everything that we used and again this is just something that this is the way that I do it and it's the way that I've kind of watched YouTube videos and learn myself and you, the thing with jigs you can make them as unique as you want to so uh, again we'll go take you through step by step and uh, and kind of show you what we do this is just something fun do during the winter time can I get out and fish a lot like today it rained all day and it's just kind of cold nasty outside so come in here in the basement and make jigs in the winter time so you can use them all summer long I think after it's all said and done and we'll we get a little bit farther into this as we go but we're looking at probably around 40 cents 40 to 60 cents to make your own jig and the, you know you go buy jigs at any of the big box stores and you're going to be paying three to seven bucks a piece so that's the cool thing about it and the uh, cool thing is to catch some fish on something that you actually made so it's cool and gives you a leg up to where you can tweak it a little bit here get this color you don't have to worry about the store having what you got because you're making what you want we'll i do think we'll make some uh, challenge videos too we may end up start doing some different stuff on the channel as far as the fishing goes and we may actually start making um, jigs for each other and kind of like make some crazy stuff and Dusty has to catch fish with what I make him and vice versa I'm gonna have to catch fish with what he makes me I mean we're not just gonna screw each other over we're gonna make it fun and interesting and kind of mess with each other a little bit I'm too. I'm definitely so. getting screwed over on this. <laughs> yeah. I can, I can feel it, so. I'm gonna let Dusty kind of explain the whole process and then I'm gonna try to make one myself and see how bad I can screw one of these up on the first try so anyways let's get started we'll see you guys in just a second. All right, guys, we're here at the lead pot. We've had the lead melting now for about 10 or 15 minutes. And as you'll see, the mold itself is sitting on top of the lead pot. The thing about that is, is we want the mold to be good and hot because if you don't, get the 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 uh, mold uh, it warm before you pour then you get cold joints as you can see right here good head on it but then it doesn't go all the way down so the first couple of pours can actually look like this and it's fine you can dip it down in there let it come off sometimes you can reuse it sometimes you don't but you want to make sure that the uh the mold gets good and warm before you make your pour. Again, if you pour two or three times, it's gonna heat the mold up. This is just a little trick I've learned and it really helps. So, <clears throat> first thing we're gonna do, we got our mold um, warm. We're gonna open it up. Again, wood handles, be careful this is hot. All right, now, what we've got here is a four out Eagle Claw hook. I use Eagle Claws on my jig molds, or on my jigs, because it's just a robust hook. I want a real good heavy hook. You can spend some money, you can get Gamagatsu, and I do have some of those. You can get the Do It brand, whatever you want. But this is what I like just for these jigs. Uh, and it don't hurt your wallet as bad when you lose them and you're gonna use them. We're gonna do a 3 8 ounce to get to, to get started. So again, the hook, this is the offset hook. It's an Eagle Claw flipping jig hook. So we're gonna take it, that's hot. We're gonna put it right there. Now, <clears throat> boy, you lost it. We're gonna use a hole pin, and this will come into play here in a few minutes, but the hole pin is gonna go right here. It's just a piece of Teflon that you can see it's cut. You can buy these in a pack of five or 10, but it's gonna go right in that slot right there, and it's gonna be slid right up as close to the hook as you can get it. 
Okay, now that's it for the first part. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna close the mold after I put this in here. We're gonna close it. We're gonna squeeze it as hard as we can. We're gonna go down the middle hole. This is a gravity fed um, lead pot. So we're gonna put it right over the hole here. And we're gonna open it up. And there we go. So we've got that. The pour is complete. Now we're gonna pay, I think this thing's called a spruce, but we'll, it's just the head that comes off of this is the access. So we're gonna take it, we're gonna twist it, and put it back in the lid. Now, so once we've done that, as you can see, there's a little bit of access, uh, excess lead that's right here on the top. So what we're gonna do is just take just a file, a fine file, and just hit that just a little bit at the top. You don't have to do this, we're gonna powder coat it, but it's just something. As you can see, this fell out, but we're gonna put it right back in. All right, so now, now that we have our head made, we're gonna go right over here. I've got these forceps here that I bought. I bought these on, uh, you can get them on Amazon, but they're really good to do this process with, this next process. So, we're gonna put it around the hook, and basically it just holds it. All right, we're gonna hop right over here. I got a little propane torch here. This is what I use. Some people use a heat gun. Some people use uh, this. Some, maybe, some people can even use a candle, but I'm just going to hold it right over the top here. Okay, I'm going to warm it up. Now, while I'm doing that, as you can see, Justin can show this. This is Protec powder paint, okay? This actually is a color black blue flake. Now, I've got this in a fluidized bed, which is just air going through the bottom. It's got like a a uh, filter in the bottom of it, but all it does is fluidize it, moves it around. As you can see, it almost liquefies it. So once we get the head good and heated up, then we're literally just going to dip that right in there. And as you can see, it's pretty in black and blue flake. Okay, I'll go heat it up just a little bit more. That gets any dry powder that's on it off of it, and we are done with that process. Now, what I do on that is I'll lay it here, I'll hang it up here, and I'll let it cool off just for a few minutes. All right, so now we've got the head poured, and as you can see here, we've got this white thing sticking out. You're probably like, what in the world is going on here? Okay, this is where the, um, the brush goes, or the weed guard, okay? This is a weed guard. And they come, you can buy them, as you can see up here, you can buy them in a pack of 50, and we'll put that link in the bottom. But, so this comes out right here. And it leaves a nice little hole right there. So we got this, and it's gonna go right here. Now, this is where the fun comes in. You see this, it's a two-part epoxy. You can get this at Amazon, you can get it at Lowe's, you can get it basically anywhere, you can get it at Auto Parts Place. But what we're gonna do, just gonna take the caps off, Put a little dab of the red and a little dab of the black. Now, take your bottom of the paintbrush, whatever you got, just mix it around. And that's your two part. Now, the key to this is this right here would probably do 10, 15, 20 jigs. We're just doing one for the sake of this video. But you, if you would do this and you buy this, it's not that expensive. It's maybe $10, $15 for both. But you have your 10 or 12 jigs ready to go and, and you can maximize this. But di just dip it in just a little bit and stick it in there. Make sure it's good and straight and walk away from it. It'll take about five minutes. That'll be rock hard and it will not come out. That's what she said. <laughs> okay, so the key to this is um, two part epoxy. Some people use super glue. I've tried it. I've tried really good super glue. This stuff is killer. Again, two part epoxy. Put it in there and get it going. Now, while that's drying, we'll talk about jig skirts. So, <clears throat> you can buy so many jig skirts. You can buy the jig skirts in a pack to where they've already got a band on them. You can buy, as you can see here, um, here's an example of a jig skirt with the bands already on them bought. This is a package of five, okay? Now, you can do that or you can buy the single strands. A little bit cheaper to do this way, plus you can build your own uh, 
just any design, any colors you can play around with. And as you can see here, got some guys that really like hot paint, not on jigs, on spinner baits. We can get into that on another episode, but just you can make what you want. So what we've got here is you see this black and blue, it's already made. This is one that probably bought somewhere in a pack. All right, so what I've done here, like I said, I've got the, uh, the one that's already made here. I've got three tabs. I've put my uh, collar on. It's gonna go down in here. I'm gonna slide the little hook through the three tabs. I'm gonna bring it up. I usually like to bring it up about half, maybe almost three quarters of the way. Now you pull the skirt down, or the uh, collar down, and you'll take this off. Pull it down so what we've got here is the beginnings of a skirt now we'll take i'll reach over here and get the scissors what we'll do is just cut some people cut these one at a time i like to just cut them all at once we'll take it so we'll cut that end we're going to cut this in And we've got a good full skirt right here. Just a black and blue skirt. So, um, again, this is the one that's factory, kind of just like the pack you would see. This is the one that we make. And again, you can make them as, as non-full or slender as you want, or as fat and beefy as you want. It just depends on what kind of presentation you want to get. I like a, I like a good full skirt. But I think sometimes when the fish are finicky, maybe uh, one that's maybe not as full might do better. So I like to keep my skirt simple, believe it or not. I like a black and blue certain times of the year, like a, a brown um, and then maybe even a black. So that's what we're looking at right now. So now we've got our jig. We're waiting for our epoxy to harden and then we're ready to put the skirt on. So we'll be right back with you once the harden or once the epoxy hardens. Yep. All right, so we got our skirt here. What I do, take it, grab the collar, just let it fall over right there. And what we'll do is take our jig, push the hook through the collar, slide it up on the skirt collar. And what we've got here is a finished product. Now, I like to take and I, sometimes I do it out on the water, but I like to take scissors over here. I like to cut guard at a 45. I'm not sure that it helps, but I just do. I like to have as least collar or at least fiber guard on there as possible. And then what you can do too, you can trim up the skirt a little bit. Some people like it long, some people like it short, but we just made a jig, black and blue, brush jig. And for the time it takes to make one, you can make 10. I mean, you just, you got everything laid out, you can make it. You just saved five bucks. Hmm. It's amazing. And if I can do it, I swear anybody can do it. You say, gosh, that's a lot of stuff to get. And it's got the biggest, the biggest thing that you've got in this is find your lead pot. Get a good gravity fed lead pot, they're about a hundred bucks, maybe a little bit less. You can find lead anywhere. You go to a tire weight, or get, get some tire weights. They've got them by the five gallon buckets laying around. Um, and, uh, and really just start buying the little pieces and parts. Everything comes in bulk. So once you get your jig, uh, your skirt collars, once you get your hole pins, and once you get your fiber guards, really all you got left, you'll have a bulk of that stuff. And then you just start buying the skirts that you want. and and you'll have all the other stuff laying around. But that's what we got, uh, black and blue jig. Uh, good, good springtime jig. Some people throw them all year long, but um, we'll actually throw it in a tank here in a few minutes, maybe put a, a, uh, a grub on the end of it and, and show, you, uh, show you what it looks like underwater. So hopefully, Justin's gonna take his uh, turn at this and we'll see how bad he screws it up. All right, so now I'm gonna give it a go with this, see if I can screw this up, like Dusty said. We'll put that right in here. You can see it's got little eyes right there, so it kind of lines everything up for you. And we wanna scoot this up all the way up as close as we can get it to the hook. Now, we're going in the middle hole here. And that is 
a screw up. <laughs> Alright, let's try that again. <laughs> Still didn't take well, did it? Yeah. Well, I told you folks, if you want to be somebody <laughs> that can't do nothing. I'm your man. Alright, how am I doing this wrong? You just gotta stick the bottom right into it. You're fine, the third one will work. Third time is a charm. Third time is a charm. Right, maybe we got enough fix. Hey, you never know by the time I make one, it may cost me seven dollars. Yeah, we're already in a hole on this one. <laughs> yeah, so luckily I edit these videos, so it's gonna look like it took me one try to get this, not four. Yeah, this is four. <laughs> Butter. Lock it. That's the approved. Where's the little grabbers at right here? Grabbers. They grab this. <laughs> yeah. Now, how do you know when this thing's hot enough? Yeah, it's. it's you just kind of feel. Yeah. No, it'll never be hot enough, but the jig probably is right now. Yeah. Right, so now we're gonna dip it down in here. Mm -hmm. Shake it around a little bit. Yeah. It's been good if you get it all the way down in there. It did go all the way down in there. So that part. That gets there. covered up by the. Right. Yeah. Now we're saving power. Yes. Yeah. Put down a penny pusher. It's not the prettiest, but it'll catch a fish. All right, so we gotta let this cool now. So let's get this off. All right, we should be cooled down enough now. So we're gonna pull this off, right? Yep. Okay, we're gonna get this little plastic guide out. And that, like Dusty said, just leaves you a hole there. Yeah, look, you'll never see that. See, the skirt's gonna go up there and hide that. So Don't do um, that, that saved me like another, I can make another half a jig out of that. All right, so now we got this, we got our epoxy. Let's go ahead and get a little bit on the end of it there. And then it's just gonna go right in the hole. Make sure it seats all the way down. Good and straight. Uh -huh. There you go. And we'll be right back. All right, now that our epoxy is set up, we're ready to apply the skirt. Once again, uh, I'm just doing the black and blue combo. It, uh, as Dusty said, it's kind of a all around, just good color to use about any time you want to throw it. So we decided to go with that color scheme, but just want to grab it at the middle where your um, collar is here. Just kind of give it the flop, try to get everything semi-organized. Then you're just going to feed it up through the hook. Run it up. And there you go. Get everything straightened out here. Very first jig. That's it. And then like he said, you can do some trimming if you want to. I'll probably wait till we get out and actually start fishing this thing. But uh, yeah, that's it. My very first one. Um, we have a test tank set up over here. So I'll probably grab the camera and uh, Dusty will throw one of these jigs in. We'll get some line tied to one of them. We'll throw them in the test tank and kind of show you guys what kind of action these things are going to do underwater, um, what they look like to the fish, to the bass that you're going to be going after, what makes them so appealing. So uh, go ahead and we'll get over here and start doing that and uh, see what you guys think. All right, so guys, we've got our jig. I'll get the line out of the way here. We've got it in the tank here. Um, so as you can see, just with the way that this thing is, so if you just leave it, you can see how the... The grubs kind of wanted to stick straight up. That right there is killer. That's the action you want. This is actually a net bait uh, kicking bee chunk is what we put on the end of it. But so it's coming through, and you can see it's just uh, it's a good full skirt, good action, and we're just bouncing along the bottom. It's kind of what it would look like underwater. And there's many different types of plastic baits you can Absolutely. put on for yeah, trailers. This is just something that I like to use. I like the trailer that comes up like that right there. I like that action. I want that bass just to come and just it to drive it crazy. So, um, so just a little bit of uh, something to show you what it looked like underwater. And and uh, this right here is a Do It Molds brush jig, three eight ounce. All right, guys, there you go. That is uh, 
how to make a jig. I appreciate Dusty for letting me come over. We got many more to come uh, from the, uh, I'm gonna call this the Hilton Bait Shop just because you guys seen my last video. He's got way too much stuff in here. But yeah, uh, yeah he, he's gonna show us a lot more. He's got molds for many different types of tackle and bait to make. So there'll be plenty of these videos. If it's something that you guys did like, be sure to you know give us a thumbs up on it, smash that for us. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and uh, share this with your friends. We're gonna be doing a lot of fishing stuff, especially as the weather breaks. Uh, springtime rolls around and I don't fish that much and I even know that that's when these fish are gonna start spawning these bass are gonna be spawning and that's when it gets fun right absolutely yep. so I appreciate Dusty for having us over here today um, we got a lot to do we, we, we've got a lot of stuff to make and a lot of videos a lot of content to come so I appreciate you guys like I said we're gonna leave links for everything down below uh, some of those will be Amazon links that supports me and supports the channel so if you want to buy some of this stuff through Amazon I would greatly appreciate it if not, we're going to leave links to where Dusty buys it from so you can get this stuff as cheap as possible. And uh, you got anything there? Good to go, man. Good to go. I appreciate you guys. We'll see you on the next one.